Isaiah chapter 30. Isaiah chapter 30. Amos is the 30th book in the Bible. Woe to the rebellious children. What a, what a way to start. Isn't God great? Woe to the re rebellious children. You're doing wrong. You're not doing what God told you to do. Plain and simple. Say if the Lord, that's God speaking. <laughs> See how clear the Bible is? Well, Isaiah, I don't know, the Lord said it. That take counsel, advice, seeking, but not of me, God. I'm going to run to the world. We're going to go to a marriage council, but we're not going to get on our knees first before God and try to get our marriage straightened out. I'm going to run to the bank and get a loan, a mortgage, without asking God first, does he want me to get a loan or mortgage? And sometimes it don't work out. I got a car payment right now, and I had a good job. We prayed to the Lord, sought the Lord, and, and the more and more we sought the Lord, the more and more the car that we had was failing and failing. And we prayed, and we prayed, and we got to the point that the mechanic, you know, this, the computer, the car's computer is failing. The car is going to, you're going to need a replacement. And we prayed for the money. We prayed, and we got a loan for the car that we have. And then I lost my job. But God has able to have me to keep paying for that car. I've had to give up a house and a car before. And we prayed, we sought the Lord, and also been to, you know, a medical thing come, prayed, sought the Lord. Then I gotta go to the doctor. I mean, it's the absolute need and they go to council, but they go to the world. Many churches have failed and have a poor testament because they run to a bank and get a mortgage and then they can't pay the mortgage off. And that leaves a terrible testimony for Christians amongst bankers and go as far as back as you can. And that cover with a cover covering. The Christian is to be covered with the blood. We're supposed to be wrapped around in the Lord Jesus Christ. We're, we're, I know we're Isaiah Old Testament. I'm Trying to spiritualize it to the Christian. And there are Christians who are covering themselves with sports, career, hobbies, anything but the Word of God. You say, what well, about church? We're in the day and age right now in 2021. There are not many churches out there. A lot of my friends don't have a church. What do you do now? Be in church. There is no King James Bible believing church. You better be wrapped in a book. Well, uh, here I am sitting with my wife and my children and there's no church. What do I do? You better have the covering. You better have the counsel of God. You better be able to teach your family in your living room. I know that's a shame to even think of with churches today. Have a service in their living room. That's how many proper Bible churches started. But not of my spirit, the Holy Spirit. That Holy Spirit was able in the Old Testament. You can't say in the Old Testament the Holy Spirit was not there. And God says instead of my Holy Spirit... Jerusalem, Judah, you went after men. You're going to learn in a moment. 
They're going to go after Egypt. And you don't have the covering of Jehovah. You got the covering of Baal. And we'll learn that in Jeremiah. You got the covering of the Queen of Heaven. That's not God's covering. Well, we'll go to high places and burn incense. That's not the council. <coughs> well, we'll sit down with, with a yes, yes board. That's not the council. We'll look at a crystal ball, look at tea leaves, we'll look at the, the horoscope in the Jerusalem newspaper at the time. That's not the council of God. And you know what the you know what the implication that is written here? That God is saying to to Jerusalem and Judah with Isaiah the prophet, nobody's going to Isaiah and saying, Isaiah, what am I supposed to do? And Isaiah is a proper right man. You can't say, well, we didn't have any prophets. We didn't have any good churches around here. You have Isaiah. And there are men today, there are, God has given good men, and not great, who know the Bible, who God speaks to them, and he trains and teaches other people the word of God properly. And the people and the Christians, well, I, I'll go to my guys. I'll go to what my church says. I'll go to what the doctrine of my church. I'll go to, you know, this creed. I'll go to, I'll go to anything but that man over there who God's using. Because that man teaches wrong. That man kicks my gods. I don't like that. What, what, what was that? What was that prophet's name? And, and Jehoaz, hey, is there anybody of the Lord? Yeah, but I don't like him because he doesn't speak good for me. I bet you Isaiah wasn't like. I know Jeremiah wasn't like. I'm not like. Are you lumping your? Yes, I am lumping myself in them. That they may add sin to sin. That's not good. There is a religion called the Catholic religion, and I grew up in the Catholic religion. I left the Catholic religion in 1987, where you go into a little booth, and you fee fi full yourself, and a little door would open up, and you would say, you know, to the idiot there, you know, this is what I've done, this is what I did, and this is what I did this week, and blah, 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 I forget how it's done. And he would say, Hail Marys, and, and fill of grapes, and... Record it so they can use it against you. <laughs> and you know what you're doing when you're going to another... That man's a sinner. He could be messing with altar boys. You know what you were doing when you went to that man to be to be obscene of your sins? You were, you were adding sin to sin. Because nowhere in the Bible does it say where to go to another man. We're supposed to go to God, Jesus Christ, our high priest. So when you go to another sinner... To be absolved of your sins for the money that would fat in the pocketbook of the of the church. All you do is adding sins to your sins because your sins are not being cleansed. It says God is faithful and just to, to forgive and forget forget. And you're adding sins to the person you're talking to because he has no business. The Bible says confess your faults, not your sins. Hey, listen, people, you know, I wish you all prayed for me. I, I got a bad problem with, with, with impatience. Impatience is, is not a serious sin. It's a sin. But, you know, I, I just, this is something I deal with every day. You know, some people, you know, I, I go to work and I just get, I get so angry. With my I, I, Listen, everyone pray for me. I just get so angry at work. You know, those are faults and sins, but the, but we're not confessing our sins to, to the church and to other. We are, I need help in this realm. Can you pray for me? We go to God, we confess our sin. And then there is a sin that we do confess to another. You say, you know, brother <clears throat> or sister or an unsaved person. I want to tell you, you know what? That tongue lashing I gave you the other day, that was uncalled for. I have sinned against God. And, and, the things I said to you, I know I, I can't be. For, I know it can't be forgotten. 
And there's going to the person that you sinned against after you've gone to God. Many Christians will go, okay, Lord God, forgive me, but then they won't go to the person to make it right that they sinned against. That walk to go down into Egypt, the world. Egypt's a type of the world. We need finances. Run down to the bank. Run down to the pawn store. Run to the world. Instead of running to God, verse 1. And have not asked at my mouth. They're not even, there was a king in, in, the, in the Old Testament. He was diseased in his feet and he went to the physicians and not God. Ahab, Isaiah walks in, prepare your house, you're going to die. That man turns around to the wall and he starts seeking God right away. He didn't go to the doctor and say, well, you know, maybe, no, he went right to God. To strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh, not God. Where's our strength? Our strength lies in man. And, and, and I'm going to say it with the churches today. Well, you know, th th this bank has given us a mortgage and all that. And this people gave us money. And this people give us money. And where's God in it? Where's the glory to God? Great Pharaoh, break the world. And to trust in the shadow of Egypt. You know, the heat and the, and the, and the, and the fierce temperatures of, of life will go hide in the world. Therefore shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame. Almost like a shame when you don't study and read your Bible. And the trust in the shadow of Egypt, your confusion. God will turn against you. Now, you have to go to the world. And I'm not saying don't get a loan or mortgage. It may be needed. But don't let that be your only means. Go to God first in prayer. God may have another avenue. God may have something else better. God may give you something where only God could be praised and glorified. Hey, we burned the mortgage paper. Yeah, but, you know, if you really, really, truly sought God, maybe five, six, seven, ten years ago, maybe God would have had something for you and you wouldn't have to wait so long and waste your money on, on interest and all that. I've seen in a couple of churches with building programs, they get that mortgage and they build that new building and then they get settled in the new building and boom, everybody leaves. And then they struggle. That's three or four churches. For his princes were at Zoan, these are cities in Egypt, and his ambassadors came to Haines. <coughs> Excuse me. They were all ashamed of the people that could not profit them. You see, you know, what the world wants is, what can you do for me? Many banks are not going to give you a loan because they're not going to prosper from you. And your odds are you probably may not pay it. And the well-known expression, the banks will loan money who don't need to borrow money. <laughs> Nor be a help nor profit, but a shame and also reproach. Why are there so many homeless vets on the cities and the streets in America? Because America doesn't need them no more and they have no use to America no more. Think about it. A vet goes over into the military service, goes into combat and loses a leg, loses an arm or two. And they ship him back to, to the States and he goes to the hospital and, and, well, we can't send him back to war no more. What do we do with him? Throw him out in the streets. 
We can't use him no more. That, that's the American government that everyone praises and honors. The world is, what can I get from you? Don't you dare ask anything from me. The bank will give you money. It seems to be the theme for tonight. The bank will give you money. Why? So they can charge you interest. I mean, you think, all right, let's say you go to bank. I need $100. And at the end of six months, two years, three, I will, I will pay you $100 back. $100 for $100. Do you think they would go for that? That the fact is, with the interest and all that, you, you, you do $100, and after six years, you end up paying $10,000 in interest? Whatever, I don't know what it is. And then what you do is you look at the world, wow, they just love us. They're just so great. Uh, and the fact, well, you know... We have, this, we have this bank here, and it just helps churches. Not for free. There is an interest rate, right? They're not helping. You're helping the church. You're helping the bank. Well, this is not going to be popular. The burden of the beast of the South. <laughs> now we're going to get into the animals. Into a land of trouble and anguish. Why? Because there is no looking to God. There is no counsel of God. And you know why animals get hit on the side of the road? Do you know why we have roadkill? Because Adam and Eve sinned against God and ate the fruit. Do you realize how many animals there would be if there was no sin? And how many humans there would be if there was no Genesis 3? You wouldn't have to save the whales. There'd be so many of them. <coughs> Think about that. Animals suffer because of man. All the bears are coming out of the woods because we're going in the woods building houses. This fish is going to extinct because we keep capturing them because we're hungry. They taste so good. And that was after the ark. When Noah came out of that ark, mm, that smells good. Noah, yeah, you can start eating that. Imagine if Peter was there. Oh, no, not so, Lord. We don't eat vegetables. <laughs> then we don't even know what I'm talking about. From whence come the young and the old lion. Now watch this. The viper. That's a type of snake. The fiery fly, the fiery flying, I can't say that. Fiery flying serpent. Have you gotten the biblical cross references here? They will carry their riches upon their shoulders. Here is the devil coming along with a group of people who won't put their faith in God, will put their faith in the devil, in the world. The devil's like, watch this. Carry the riches upon shoulders of young asses and the treasures upon a bunch of camels to a people that shall not profit them. What is that? I'll tell you what that is today. Interest rates. I've got interest rates. I've got a couple store credit yards. I've got a... Uh, uh, interest rate on my auto loan. And by time I pay off that auto loan, the interest that I have in that auto loan is almost double. And Satan's like, ha <laughs> Come on, if, if man loved man, everybody's good purpose for man, we wouldn't have interest rates. Do you know that was a violation of the Jewish law that a Jewish person could not charge another Jewish person with Usury, which is interest rates. And so since the Jewish people are going to Egypt in violation of the law, they are being charged interest, which if they would go to their fellow Jew, their fellow brother, they would not have that interest. 
And then we'll go to this too. I've talked to many, many preachers about that. You get a Christian who goes up and I'll use the example for pastors, plural. And the pastors will loan them money for whatever the need is. And then the Christian never pays it back. That's a terrible testimony. You're acting just like the world. Well, thank you for the money, Pastor. Thank you for the money, fellow Christian. Don't even think about me giving it back. What can you do for me? Not what I can do for you. That, that's the whole motif. And God be like, okay, I'll, I'll get that out of you. Sowing and reaping. And the devil comes along. It's his world. But he got the whole world in his hand. That ain't God. That's the devil. Bunch of camels to the people that shall not profit them. Egypt is going to be no help to the Jewish people. And yet the Jewish people are paying and, and giving their goods to the Egyptians. For the Egyptians shall help in vain. Let me tell you what happens to the close of the book of, of Jeremiah. Jerusalem and Jerus Jerusalem and Judah has been sacked. What did Egypt do to help them? Absolutely nothing. As a matter of fact, there's a group of people that take Jeremiah and Baruch and they kidnap them and they go to Egypt and God says, okay, put a chalk stone there and Babylon comes out and wipes out the Egyptians. Therefore have I cried according to this, their strength is to sit still. That's Egypt. Egypt, is, Egypt, you do what Egyptians do. Why are my people running down there? Why are my people in the church using movies? And everybody's welcome. Where I told them, go in all the world and preach the gospel. How more hard is that? And they're running to Egypt with movies and be happy and letting your light shine, taking the Bible out of contents like the world does. You know how often the unsaved people come up to me on the street and they quote the scriptures out of context? Judge not least you be judge. Can you find that in the Bible, first of all? And then let's look at the context. And by the time you get that, they're already down the end of the street. Well, you know, another thing, Hollywood said, you know, money is the root of all evil. No, not money. Money just sits there. Oh, you know, the Bible says drink a little wine. Yeah, but what's the, you know, see, that's the world. And the Christian runs to the world and acts like the world and plays with the world. And God's like, uh, what about my way? Yeah, we got a church full of people. And the world's looking at your church like, that ain't holy. That's like our rock concert. What's the difference between your church service and my and our rock concert? So what does it get you at the judgment seat of Christ? Absolutely nothing. And you may not end up at the judgment seat of Christ. <laughs> God tells Egypt to sit there, behave yourself. And then the Christians run down there and God's like, I can't believe it. And there was, there was a time when I first got saved in, in the late eight, 80s that the, the world was actually sending ambassadors into the church, insurance agencies and all, you know, go and act like them, be saved like them and, and to sell your insurance. And that came out to be, and that was all real, and that, that didn't last long. 
You see, when the when the world comes in, you can catch the world. That ain't allowed. But when the Christian goes acting like the world, ooh. Now go write it before in a table. I say what I just told you, write it. And the table is a tablet, pad of paper. And note it in a book. Gee, I wonder what that book is. That it may be for thine, for, for might be in time to come forever and ever. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. What Isaiah writes is forever. Now, you're not going to get the originals. They're gone. I had to throw that in. That this is a rebellious people, verse 1. Isaiah, when you write what you're writing, get this down, note it down, write it down, make the note. You're rebellious. Judah and Jerusalem. You know, the Bible says we're going to get a new name in heaven. What if that name matches our character as a Christian? That could be scary. You imagine going down, you're, you're in New Jerusalem, and, you know, you're flying, not with wings, you know, you're just cruising on, and you meet another crew. Hi, how you doing? What's your name, fool? Well, that's interesting. What's your name? I'm Loud. Well, how'd you get the name Loud? Well, I would preach on the streets in Daytona, they'd get, you're too loud. I said, I like that. That's just going to be his new name. Imagine meeting somebody in New Jerusalem. Hey, what you doing? What's your name? Worldly. I mean, you have read Pilgrim's Progress. You do believe Pilgrim's Progress is near inspiration of the Holy Spirit, don't you? I do. Imagine we get a... Now, think about your character before before God. And think about, All right, what if your new name matches your character? What if you get the name, you know, you, you, you run across somebody in New Jersey. Hi, how you doing? What's your name? Gospel track. Whoa. Wow, that's a good one. What's your name? Orphan. Well, where you get off? I, I took care of a lot of orphans when I was on that earth and led them to the Lord and took care of them in the scriptures. And God gave us food. And took care of us with food. What's your name? I'm Mega Church. Where's your crowns? I didn't get any. I mean, this is a rebellious people. What does God say about the lives of the same church age? You're rebellious. I would rather have you cold or hot, but you're walking down the middle of the road. And I'm standing outside your door, knocking on the door, where the church age before you had the door open. Philadelphia church age, before the Laodicean church age, that door was open, and God says, no man's going to shut it. All right? And when you come to the Laodicean church age, the door is shut, and Jesus is outside. What happened? And you do now realize what's going on with the world. You do know that missionaries are now coming back home. Lying children. You think you can put that on the church? I've seen it in churches I've been in. I saw that hand. Well, first of all, buddy, my eyes aren't closed. There was no hand that got rose. I have heard and been revealed by preachers, by, by the deacons of churches have lied. I had a whole church lie about me and my wife. And an unsaved person that we, we were witnessing, witnessing to my wife, they were gossiping about us that I was sleeping with a woman at the church and she was sleeping with another man at, at the church. They were you know, great Christians. 
And my my wife's best friend at work, she went to see, she says, well, when did this all happen? Well, you know, lunchtime, my husband goes out when I'm at, because I work second shift. He goes in and, you know, lunchtime, you two are on the phone talking to each other at lunchtime. How can, yeah, I know. Lying children. We went to church one time. My wife told me, she said, you know, she goes, I, I enjoy the nursery. Good, amen. Glory to God. She says, but they gossip. Man, you won't believe how much they gossip, Stiley. And I said, I'll tell you what. You go to the nursery director and say, listen, I can't stand that gossip. I don't want to work with those people that gossip. Only if I really have to. The lying Christians offended her. You imagine if you, if you get that new name in glory. What's your name, liar? That's my name. Oh, okay. I wouldn't be too proud to say that. Because Jesus said in John 8, 44, the father of lies is the devil. Well, they're not seeking God. They're not going to God, so they're acting like the devil. And when you come up with doctrines that are not correct out of your pulpits and you're lying to the people, there it is. They're rebellious and lying. Now, I'll tell you what the biggest, greatest lie I get when I hear these some of these preachers. They tell the same preacher's story, but they change it so it happens to them in their life. And what they don't realize is that Siley Hayward is sitting in the pews of the church. I'm a doctor of theology, and the Bible Institute I went to had classes about your phoniness, and you're not fooling me. Now, you may fool the other sheep or goats, but I've already been prepared in the Greek. Give me a copy of the Greek. Give me the original. Well, the uh, uh, look, look, look. Yeah, 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 you liar. Children that will not hear the law of the Lord. You know what the law of the Lord was for this? Time? It's all the Old Testament. All the, mo uh, from Genesis to uh, Joshua. Then Joshua took over for the law giver, Moses. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Num Numbers, and Deuteronomy is the law. Then Joshua came along. Jesus. Jehovah saves. You know what the same thing is to that for the church age? What Paul writes to the church. It's a shame that you go to a, a Baptist church and almost every week, open your Bibles to the Gospel of Matthew. Open your Bibles to the Gospel of God. That ain't our book. You're not rightly dividing. Paul is the, 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 the apostle to the church. Peter is the apostle to the Jews. The book of Hebrews is written to the church. H-E-B-R-E-W-S. C-H-U-R-C-H. Hebrews can make coffee, but the church can't. Leave that one for you to figure out. I'm telling you right now, a lot of these preachers and teachers and, and phony. I, I, I sat I sat one week in the hospital watching these phonies. I couldn't even watch. Oh, they're on the screen, the television. Which say to the seers, the prophets. Which he would say to the to the teachers of the Bible, like me. I'm not a seer, but we'll bring it up to the church age. I'm a teacher of the Bible. I'm a preacher of the Bible. See not. Seers would see what God has spoken to them. In vision. We don't have that in the church age today. And to the prophets. Prophets say, hey, you know what? You know what a prophet? I, we don't have no prophets in the church age. Then how do I tell the people they're going to hell? 
That's prophecy. How do I tell them the rapture's coming? That's prophecy. How do I tell them there's a seven year period of tribulation coming and three and a half great years in the midst of great tribulation? That's prophecy. How do I tell you not to receive the mark in the tribulation period? That's prophecy. How do I tell a Jehovah Witness about the 144,000? That's pro There's no prophets in the church. And how often do you read your Bible? Well, uh-huh. 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 I like when the Lord just lets me go. All right, say to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things. Don't you dare tell them there's no Christmas. It's pagan. And don't you tell them Easter comes from Babylonian. You know, people got offended at that. Don't say any more about that. Matter of fact, I got to change what you write on your Facebook. I'll give names, dates, and places. I've got witnesses. Paul and Jesus Christ named names. So will I. They tell them, listen, it, it don't bother me when the world, when I'm at the farmer's market or I'm out in public, you know, don't pass out those, okay, you're in the world, you don't want it. You're not going to stop me, but, you know, but when Christians, it, it, it annoys me when I'm a Christian, you are not to be doing what you're doing. You realize how much I want to punch you in the face? You know, he's cruel. To, if I was really cruel, you'd be having two black guys every time I, I'm a Christian. You ought not to be doing that. That's not what Jesus did. You're turning people away. I'd punch you in the face if I didn't have grace and love. You know what they're saying to Listen, I'm, pre I'm preaching about hell. I'm telling you that the judgment seat of Christ, you keep on doing what you're doing. You're not going to get rewards. That's a problem. You know, you know the pastors and Christians and... and don't say that. Don't do that. Shut up. I'm offended that your car has scripture all over it. Shut up. That's, that's what they're telling the prophets. Prophets? Prophesy not unto us right things. If the Bible says it and it's historically true and it's right, don't you say it. You're offending. Black and white. What did, did, did I just teach anything wrong? Listen, you're not going to offend me. I've had my own family abandon me, and I had my own family who are Christians abandon me. You think you, an outsider of my family, step in and going to tell me I, I am wrong? You think I'm going to be offended at you? I'm going to give you what I give I give to people like that. Uh -huh. yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Bye, you fool. I have a great gift for sarcasm and selective hearing. Thank you, Lord. Prophesy not unto us right thing. If it's right, don't tell us. You know how many churches I've been in with Christians? My own family? My I don't know if I read my grandma, when I left the Cardinal Church, me and Lisa. You know, there was it was years she would not tell me we're not going to that church no more. Like, oh, what happened? <sighs> What? What happened, Grandma? You were right, and we didn't want to have to admit it to you. Oh! You know how many times I've had that happen to me? You know what? You are right. I step on toes with cliques that are nails sharpened by the Word of God, the sword. Listen, I've been saved since 1987. I'm a doctor just like them. Prophesy not unto us right thing. If it's right, don't tell us. Don't we, we don't want to hear it. Speak unto us smooth things. Prophesy to see. Tell us lies. There's a worldly song. Tell me lies, lies, lies. I forget what it was. Let's, 
a woman singer sing. That could be the theme song for the church today. They want to lie. Why are there so many religions? Right there. Why do mega churches flourish? Right there. Well, why are they listening to that carnal preacher? Right there. They want to hear it. I had a, I had a Daytona police officer. Well, where's your crowds of people? Right there. They don't want the truth. They rather give them hamburgers and hot dogs and French fries for for a meeting, and everybody say this prayer. And me, you're going to hell unless you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. I had a Christian tell me I don't like turn or burn. Well, what are you else gonna tell them? I don't like hell. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Saved from what? Jesus came to seek that which was lost. What does lost mean? But well, they're not in our church. You know, I bet if the rapture happens during during church hours, I guarantee there'll be many churches that will go on and the message will be finished and they'll close with the closing hymn and they would never realize the rapture happened. And some of you don't even have an idea what I said. Get you out of the way. Turn aside of the path. Cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before. That's what, Israel, you know, we don't want to hear it, Isaiah. God, we don't want to hear it. Get out of here. I got kicked out of the church because I did not like the decorations of the VBS. And two weeks after that, I got a list of things. And you know what one of the list of things, why, you know, the, the main reason, the cause, I got the I got the email. You didn't like our vaca vacation Bible uh, decorations. And then later I come back to say, well, you know, you had on your car that your dog was smarter than your. That's a, that's a means of de-churching me. Because of a dog bumper sticker that my dog is smarter than many kids that come out of school. I think it's a proven fact. <laughs> And that's also the church age today. How do I know? Where is Jesus at the end of the Laodicean church age? The door is shut and he's standing outside. Follow the Jewish history. Follow the history of Jeremiah and you'll see the history of the church. Now, Babylon ain't going to come and take over the church. Jesus, you know, everyone thinks, oh, great. You know, so great. The rapture's going to happen. Yeah, it's a great thing the rapture is going to happen. But you know why the rapture is going to happen? Because the church is making God so sick. It's like, just go get him, will you? Oh, it's kids of mine. When God says, you make me sick, he ain't calling us home because he's happy with us. I'll tell you what it means when, when God raptures the church. Let me give it to you. Let me give you the impression my mother called me when I was a little boy. Stiley William Hayward! Uh-oh, guys. I gotta go home. I'm in trouble. You know, the Bible says the trumps are sound and he shall call us by name. Ooh. We in trouble. Yes, sirree. That's why people don't like my teaching. Wherefore, thus saith the Holy One, Holy One of Israel. Here's what God has to say to it. Because ye despise this word. You think church despises the word? NIV, New King James, the living word, good news. Yeah. And trust in oppression. We just love our government that's taxing us like crazy. And we just love to form the government where, you know, democracy, where people are, are losing their homes and can't afford rent because of capitalism. I just read today a place in Florida. There, there's a trailer park. They own the trailers. 
but they can't afford the lot rent capitalism. So they have to vacate their trailers, which they own because the state says you can't move them. That's your capitalism. And you're worried about socialism because the big fat, you know, they have the right to charge whatever they want and then bring us out in the street and we can't afford anything. Capitalism is when you go to the to the convenience store and you get gasoline. And all right, let's let's get some soda and chips. Okay, we go in, we get some soda and chips. There are three lines and one cashier working three registers. That's capitalism. More, more, more money for me. Oh, you need a home? Can't afford it? Get out in the street. That's capitalism. Oh, the evils are preaching against America. There's, I've seen today, I've seen for the last month or so, they're selling shirts that Donald Trump won. I don't know why I threw that one in here. And perverseness. <laughs> they trust in perverseness. The news, Hollywood, <laughs> political parties. That's this church age. And stay there on. They won't repent and they won't get right. Therefore, this iniquity shall be to you as a breach ready to fall. Now, a breach is a hole in a wall. And the wall is ready to fall down. My understanding is President Biden is going to take that wall down that Trump built. Stay with the Bible. Stay with the Bible, Mr. Biden. Biden, however you pronounce your name. No disrespect. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, sir, and Jill, and get saved. But and, oh, he's social. He's a yeah. Okay, bring in the Antichrist. I'll be happy. Evidently, the socialism and the coming of the Antichrist is not going to make you happy because you won't have guns in New Jerusalem. You won't have a Republican president in New Jerusalem. And possibly Donald Trump won't be in New Jerusalem. You know what I mean? You know how I many Christians will be upset when they get there? Oh, Jesus, get out of my way. Where's Donald Trump? Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. <gasps> we get to New Jerusalem someday. Where's the Oval Office? Where's the Stars and Stripes? What do you want me to look at your body for? Where's the Stars and Stripes? And they have no idea what Isaiah 53 says, do they? Oh. This is why people get angry with me. Because I preach and shut up about that preaching. We don't want to hear the truth. Dwelling, swelling out of a high wall. That's not good. Who's breaking the wall comes suddenly at an instant. All comes down. He, God, shall break it as the breaking of a potter's vessel that is broken in pieces. <laughs> Smash all over the place. That's what happens in Jeremiah's time. And if you want to see that, uh, Nehemiah, when, when they talk about, Nehemiah's on his donkey, his ass. Doo, 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 doo. Wow, this place is a mess. Whoa! Now, don't speak to me like, like Balaam. Be a good ass. Some of you didn't get that one either. Uh, this place is such a ruin. I can't go any further than my donkey. I can't go any further. It, it's, it's a heap. It's a mess. It's, i got to turn back and go back to the city. Some of you don't know what I said because you don't read the Old Testament. What we're reading now is, is, is what Nehemiah tells us what the walls look like. Nehemiah is a, a book in the Old Testament. People hate when I do that. I'm in a good mood. He shall not spare. I'm not talking about bowling. You know, when Joshua came into Jericho, you know, part of that wall was spared for a harlot. The entire wall fell flat, except for one section. And Joshua said, go get her. Go get her family. Jerusalem wall, flat. No exception. 
I'm having fun. So that there shall not be found in the bursting of it a shirt. And that's a broken piece of pottery. To take fire from the hearth. They burned the city. Or to take water with all with all out the bed. We're going to stop there. And I'm trying to do is I'm trying to take you to you can uh, you can apply the scripture three ways. This is what I'm doing. Historically, Isaiah, Jerusalem, Judah, and about BC 713. That's the story. Doctrinally, Isaiah is writing to a bunch of Jews who are failing God. And so we'll carry over to Jeremiah and Ezekiel. I'm spiritualizing it to the, the physical condition of the church. And I am telling you in the spiritual application. All right. That's the law. We're under grace. That can't happen to us. That happened to them. They don't fall under this church's stuff. But it falls to us. I'm giving you three segments of the scripture. All in context. And what I'm trying to get you to see is when we're looking through Isaiah, I'm doing a commentary on Jeremiah. And let me bring it up. Let me bring it up real quick. Oh, shoot. Uh, let me open up Jeremiah real quick. I have another program open up. Ah, that's not what I wanted. Give me a moment. That was yesterday's message. In Jeremiah, let me, I'm writing a commentary on Jeremiah. And it's called the Book of Jeremiah. This is by Dr. Sally William Hayward. I had the right title. The Book of Jeremiah, Another Story of a Nation Called America. That's my commentary on Jeremiah. I'm working on it. What we're reading now is the church age. Just we're not under the law. We're under grace. But we're following the same avenues. 